Welcome back to the dopest show you won't get sick of. I'm Spencer. This is Sasha. Spent most of my 20s in federal prison, but have been off heroin since April 9th, 2010. Got a lot of stories about the stupid stuff I did to get put in prison. I've also got a lot of stories about the crazy stuff that happened when I was actually in prison. And God forbid you end up in prison. You want to make some of the same mistakes I made. I was scared to death this day. And we're going to see how this story turns out here in a minute. But basically, when stuff's getting ready to go down on the yard, if you're in the middle of what's a gang war, it can be bad. Best thing you can do is get out of the way. Now, there was a guy. I was in the drug unit. At the medium security prison, there are three V-shaped complexes, the circular sidewalk that goes around. Can't walk through the middle. You have to walk this long circle, which made for a whole lot of walking, because if you cut right through the middle, you can make the places quicker. But anyway, this V-shaped building, it's four buildings, one upper, one lower, and on each side. It's joined in the middle, so if there's a problem in this unit, the guard can just walk through the hallway to the next unit. You can't see from one or the other. You can't see anything from one or the other, but it's all joint. So I went down the drug unit that's on the ground floor. Above the drug unit is another building in which I lived before. There was an older man up there that was a boxer, and he knew his stuff with boxing, and I wanted to learn a little bit of boxing, you know, any type of training I get in there, I do. My buddy Kevin Crockett, incredible leather maker, made mitts that were better than you could buy in any store, custom mitts. I mean, stuff he put, the work in there, if you're, if an inmate's getting paid $3 an hour, that's incredible money. So, for custom leather work, and it sucks because you can't take it home because you're not allowed to have any of that stuff. If you get caught shadow boxing, you can get a 200 series shot, which means big trouble, basically. So, I'm in the drug unit, which takes a year off your sentence if you complete. It takes 18 months off, really. You get six months halfway house and they release you six months earlier, the time you're in the halfway house counts towards your prison sentence, so you're released early. So I'm sneaking up to the top unit when they've got a cool guard or somebody who doesn't frequently work up there so they don't know, to box. We'd hit the mitts for an hour. And I'd give this older man a few bucks to, you know, hold the mitts and we'd go through and train. A tremendous amount, tremendous amount. And even though I moved down the drug unit, I wanted to keep training. So I'm taking a risk at that. I can get in trouble. But most likely it's just being out of pocket, you know, being in a building that's not my building, so I get in trouble for that. And there were certain things a brewing between the natives and the Pices, okay? Now, the natives at Petersburg, medium, at the low security, they have like 15 natives that are mostly blue-eyed white people that claim they have a grandma that was a Native American, the same ones that the me would not be accepted at the medium. At the medium security, you had to have like a registrar. You had to, you had to just look, you know, the, you caught the smell test, you know what I mean? You, or you could just see it and tell they're a Native. The ones at the low security, you're like, come on, man, stop that. Um, there might have been like two actual Natives at the low. The rest were just claiming. The natives at the medium were like getting, uh, they, one interesting thing is they get a check. They get a check from the casinos either once or twice a year. It'd be party time when that happened. All kinds of drama. They'd buy up all the alcohol and drugs and they'd be going buck wild during the time that they got their checks. Um, but the natives that we had at the medium security prison, when I first got to the medium security prison, the very first cell they put me in was a four man cell. They had three natives. And you know, I do have a great grandma's native, and I mentioned that, and they questions like, yeah, that, that doesn't count. Um, and these were full-on natives. You know, I figured I'd mention it, you know. But uh, but anyway, I had to move out of there because it was a native-only cell. There was a goofy blonde guy with the Jufro that moved in the cell that they told him it's a native-only cell, and he refused to move out of spite. And he messed him, and that's a funny story I'll tell another day. But, you know, is a really, they have a sweat lodge for them, too. If they go out and they come back smelling like burnt wood, stinging up something awful. But a whole sweat lodge it looks like a igloo, but you know, with uh, that they go inside and they take red hot rocks with this thing, put them in there, pour water over it, and yeah, um, have all the ceremonies, all that. It's really a thing there. But the natives we had at Petersburg Medium, in general, were not the good natives. They were from North South Dakota, and they ended up at Petersburg because they were chomos, and they got 
beat up or shanked out west, say, send them to Petersburg. So, like, 90% of the ones that were at Petersburg were not good ones. But, you know, the reservation, just from the ones that I knew that were good, that I was friends with, it's tough living on the reservation. There's a whole lot of fighting, a whole lot of stuff. It's a whole rough lifestyle a lot of them told me about that they lived. Of course, you know, out west they got a whole bunch of good natives, and apparently the natives are quick about smashing the chomos uh, because <laughs> there was a tremendous amount of them at Petersburg, you know, a couple hundred. So, like I said, it wasn't a good representation of them as a whole at Petersburg Medium. The good ones were out west. They, they got rid of the bad ones, and the bad ones ended up at Petersburg. Don't have SNY protection yards. They mix and match. So half of it's locals, but the other half are chomos and gang dropouts. It's just how it works. You listen to, you know, guy from Convict Inc., he was at Butner. Carmine Persco was there, mob boss, ended up um, passing away in prison. There wasn't nothing bad with him, but there were Tomos in the same prison he was in. It's just how it is. So, the Pices were the biggest force to be reckoned with. I mean, it was 300 or so of them, and they would go. There ended up being an issue between two of the people, a debt, basically, uh, between people, one guy had like a gambling thing and he borrowed it from this guy who was a store guy and a loan shark. The debt wasn't paid. Things were said that were bad and there was an issue. So I'm stuck. You only have 10 minutes to move every hour in prison, in the, at the medium and at the low. So they open up the doors. You can go to and from education, to and from rec, to and from medical, to and from wherever, but only for 10 minutes. So I'm stuck in this top building. I'm you know, doing the box train with this old man. He says something about at the window. And I look out the window, and on the yard, you know, on one end, at one end of the football field here, you see probably about 200 Native Americans, like all of them. The other end over here, see 300 uh, Mexicans, 300 Pices right here. Mean mugging, looking crazy, and you can bet they done dug their shanks up out of the ground. Found a shank by accident once. It looked like a little belt loop that was sticking them out of the ground. I was like, what's that? And I pulled up, and I was like, oop. And I shoved it back down. It had a spike coming out of it. So stick them down in the ground with something, so then they, you know, they had to pull them up real quick. But I'm looking at the window. I'm like, oh, Lord. Ten-minute moves. You only have ten minutes every hour to get where you're going. They only open it up for 10 minutes. I'm waiting for the 10 minute move so I can get out of here. Staff pays attention to what's happening. It comes time, I believe it's like two o'clock. They're supposed to do a 10 minute move. They don't do a 10 minute move. But they've got officers out there and everything trying to keep this from happening and popping off and everything else. And I'm like, oh God, I'm stuck up here because if I get caught up there, at the very least in the drug program, they have all kinds of menial BS punishments, like they have a timeout chair, they call it a booth. You sit in a chair for an hour with an empty chair in front of you, people sit down while everybody else is watching TV and stuff after the program's done, and people can stop, sit in the chair, tell you some advice, you have to write it down, turn it in at the end of the hour. The very least, I would have had 20 hours in the timeout chair if I'd gotten caught up there. Okay, that'd be the very least. Uh, possible I could have got kicked out of the program. I was in the program a little bit earlier than most. They usually try to time you going into the drug program so as soon as you finish the program you go home so they wait until your sentence is almost up before they allow you to do the drug program that way there's less likelihood that after you graduate that you'll mess up and lose everything you'll lose your year off because if you get the year off after you've completed the drug program the rest of your sentence is very in a very delicate balance if you get a two or three or two or one hundred series shot if you get in a fight alcohol drugs anything of that sort they take your year away. That's gone. You done lost that. So it's a very delicate balance after you've done it. It's a delicate balance while you're in it. It's hard to tell if you're going to get a chance to get back in and to get that year off. So I'm stuck up there stressed, stressed out. Stressed out. They don't open the compound on the 10-minute move at 2 o'clock. And I'm just sitting there looking out the window like, oh, God. And I'm stressed and my stomach can hear it audibly rumbling. we got bad nerves. And I'm like, oh, my God. I'm stuck up here. I'm stuck up here. And the guy who's working working the pond he's a white dude who's tough i don't mean tough like a fire nothing like that but he's by the rules but he doesn't typically work that pod which was how i was able to get up there whenever they do recall recall means you got to go back to your unit it also means whatever unit you're in you're not allowed to leave 
So I know they're getting ready to do recall. They're going to send everybody back to the units, cut Rick short. And when they do that, if this cop's standing at this door, I'm not going to be allowed to leave out without telling him, and he's going to go down there and tell some people. I'm in a situation of stressed out in which I cannot begin to explain to you. Okay? And there's also a different cop working um, our building, too, at the drug unit. I remember that. A different one working the drug unit downstairs than typically worked it. So ultimately, they call recall. This guard must have been in the back taking a dump or something. Because everybody from the yard comes up to this building, and there's like 30 people ready to enter back in the building. He unlocks the door and turns his back. There's 30 people trying to come in. It's hard to squeeze out. See, to enter the third, the top unit, there's an exterior set of stairs with a fence around it so you can't throw somebody off. So you enter through the third floor through an exterior set of stairs. You don't get to the top unit by walking in the ground level floor and going from one pod to the next. It's an exterior set of stairs. So I've got to get down that set of stairs. Okay? He unlocks it and he turns his back. When he has his back turned, I, boom, I chuck through. <sighs> Little Mexican fellow who was my buddy back when I lived in the unit. I, I, I knocked him over. Oh, I've never seen this little guy mad before. You watch your weather or you go. And I said, I'm sorry, dude. I've got to get back. Yeah, I do need to watch where you. And I'm like, oh, Lord, now I caused a problem. I get downstairs. The cop from my unit, he's like, what are you doing coming from up there? And I said, I had to give somebody. I borrowed somebody's radio. I had to give it back to him. I went back in the unit. I somehow got back in it without getting detected. And I'm still worried about that cop. I got back in it. But they, it's, this was not a typical thing. This did not happen usually, and it just happened to be when I was locked up there. So I was stressed out to the max. So I'm still worried about that CO and everything else. I'm worried about people, because people in the drug unit, the unit, you're supposed to tell on three people a month in that unit. Not for things that can get you more time or extra punishments, but they're institutional, um, like they're, they're program punishments. So they make you sit in the timeout chair. So I'm worried somebody's going to see me and tell me. People did that frequently. So I'm sitting there and I'm stressed out and everything else. And then I'm like, oh man, I messed I messed uh with Shorty up there and little, little amigo. I'm like, man, I feel bad about that. Cause I knocked him over and you know a couple people did laugh at him. Something like that can be bad. Okay? He's a Pisa. Could have the whole Pisces, could have five on one jump me after that. So ultimately we stay locked down for two hours, three hours till dinner. And when dinner happens, I make sure I go find him. He's normally, he's always smiling, always happy. I said, dude, listen. I said, I was stuck up there. I had to get down there. You know, I'm in the drawer. Yeah, you need to watch where you're going, though. And he's mad at me. And I'm like, listen, man. I said, I'm sorry. I said, you watch where you're going. I said, but we're good. I said, well, okay. You know, I said, I'm really sorry, man. I, I was wrong. I said, you know, we're good. He said, yeah, but don't do that again. I, I, I won't, man, but I just want to apologize to eh, eh, Don't do that again, though. He was still mad. I knocked him over and embarrassed him. I had to get down them stairs. I was sitting up there watching out that window thinking there was going to be a gang war, or race war, I guess you'd call it, um, between the Pisces and the Native Americans, sitting there watching for it to kick off. Then I definitely wouldn't get out. Then I'd definitely have to tell the cop. Then they definitely would call. Then I'd be in trouble and everything else. But this was one of those times where stuff just hung in the balance. And then when I knocked him out, I'm like, man, the Pisces are already having an issue. And I got to knock one of them over when I'm trying to get down the stairs. It was one of the most stressed out times I can remember being. It was, uh, but it, it, it all worked out. I got back down there. I got in the unit. And after that, I quit training boxing with the old man upstairs. I said, man, I'm too close to getting done with this program, going back to low security and, you know, quit training after that and I've been training a lot training anywhere from one to two hours three times a week even in the drug unit back when I was up there it was every day it was seven days a week got pretty decent you know um certain fundamentals and stuff of it you know we had a slip line in the room you know where there's a string and you you go under one side under the other side or under punch over under punch over you know and we had a whole set of drills and you know, progression stuff like that what we did but um, had to cut that short then, and that was a stressful day. Anyway, if you liked the video, press the like button. If not, it's 14 minutes and 44 seconds of your life in which you'll never get back. But I hope you did. Plan on doing another one tonight. Got to do some running around town. 
As soon as I get back in the door, plan on sitting back and doing it. Had to get one out real quick. Got to roll now. Y'all have a good one.